Hi everyone, I uh, hope uh, you are all having a great evening. My name is Dr. Parthenandi. For those of you who have not met me before, so just want to make sure you can hear me, just let me know. I always want to make sure that uh, uh, my mic is, is working. It has, there's been a time when it hasn't, so I just want to make sure. But uh, thank you for joining me wherever you are. If you are in the United States or outside or West Coast, East Coast, it is in, uh, uh, it's, what is it, about 1030 in beautiful Detroit, Michigan. We've had amazing spring weather, which means that it's been freezing. And we've had uh, snow today, which is always exciting, right? So I just wanted to make sure that all of you can hear me. So just let me know if you can. So perfect. Right. <laughs> So wherever you are, I appreciate you taking the time. I know that it's a busy time for all of us, and I appreciate you joining us. So um, today, we're going to be talking about, I think, a pretty interesting topic. As a physician, you know, um, we, we, we we really have your best interest, right? I think us physicians, we have your best interest at heart. So I want to make sure that you know that and that doctors like myself and a lot of uh, people in the healthcare profession really want to help. But what happens when you don't listen to your doctor's advice, right? So what happens when you don't actually, uh, you actually, you know, whatever your doctor says, you said, ah, I'm not quite sure about that. And what kind of experiences have you guys had uh, when, when you've, when you've uh, actually done that? When you've not heeded your doctor's advice, does it, has it led to a good experience, a bad experience? I want to hear from you and, and give you some, some tips. You know, I, I began this, this journey of really to talk about um, being your own healthier. Uh, a few years ago, my dad had a stroke. I, I learned how important it was for folks to really do something really important, which is to advocate for themselves, right? So if you don't feel good about something that your doctor or your healthcare practitioner is advising, then you should say, hey, you know what? I, I, I want to ask you a question. I'm not sure if we need to do this. So I always want to, you know, really emphasize you have the, the ability to do that and you should do that when you have that gut feeling. But I want to see what experiences all of you've had when you have not followed your doctor's advice, any good or bad or indifferent. Um, I think that really key is you want to make sure that, um, you know, my prescriptions, that you want to make sure that you always have a physician that is what listens to you and, and always has your best interest at heart, right? So you want to make sure that when you see that, when you see your doctor, uh, that you, you have the ability to have a discussion with him uh, or her. And, and, and be able to be open enough that if something's not working out, then you want to be able to say, okay. But I want to see what, what kind of experiences you guys have had, what, uh, what's happened when you've, when you've done that, and what's happened in, in your life. I had um, a situation when somebody said that uh, they had not listened to a doctor, and I think both their spouse and their brother both passed away from um, – uh, one was from colon cancer, one was from a pulmonary embolus. So it's, uh, you know, uh, one thing is that, you know, we have your best interest at heart. So if you ignore, you know, what they're saying, you want to make sure that uh, you understand their consequences. So just wanted to see if anybody had any any good experiences uh, that they've had or any bad experiences that they've had that has really changed their lives. So I want to say hi to all the people that are out there. You know, Jerry Bailey, always excited. Uh, for you to be here, uh, Mickey Puma, long time, Pamela Bird and Darcy Purcell, uh, Kirsten, Anna Sloan, hey, how are you? And Jagriti Jag Jagdale, Rocco, Rocco Magana, and Leila Cassis, Yilas uh, Nalniv, Nal I think from the Philippines, so good evening to you, and then Cheryl Nievas, and Ladara Nam, so awesome, Jenna. How are you doing? Um, you know, in 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 my practice, I always I always tell people if there if there's any doubt to get a second opinion, and sometimes uh, even a third opinion. We we have we have folks go to the, we go to the University of Michigan and go to other parts 
of the country even when they don't have um, uh, when they don't have uh, a clear understanding of what's going on. So really, really important. Mary Agnes, um, she has a comment. One thing that's hard now is what feels like the mar marginalization of traditional medicine and pharmaceuticals by the integrated medical world. Oh, that's really an interesting comment and question. So the idea is that, you know, uh, traditional medicine, right, as, which is Western medicine, can save lives, but now it almost feels like, you know, you want to never take the antibiotic or you never want to take the medicine because you feel like it's not natural or if that, that something is wrong if you do it. So I think that that's a very important comment. Um, you have to remember that uh, until what? Uh, until the middle of the 20th century, what did we die of, right? We died of infectious diseases. And if we didn't have Western medicine, we would all perish, you know, our, our lifespan would be much less. So I think that we have to remember, you want to be natural, and I, I'm somebody who really advocates that, that you want to be somebody who, who says, you know, um, I will do everything I can to prevent from taking medicines unless you need to. But when you do need it, guess what? Please don't ignore the doctor and not take it at all. You want to make sure that you you take the medicine uh, when it's appropriate so that you don't die. Sometimes, you know, folks wait so long that they may have, the, for example, people say, well, I want my gut to not be, you know, um, affected because of the fact that I'm taking antibiotics. Well, you could die of the with the healthiest gut on the planet if you don't take antibiotics uh, when you really need it, right? So it's really important to talk about that. Those of, us join, those of you who are just joining us, we're talking about, Hey, have you ever not listened to your doctor? So I'm, I'm a physician and I, I feel like I have uh, your best interest at heart, but are there times when you haven't listened to your doc and what's happened and what kind of experiences have you had? It doesn't mean you blindly follow everybody, uh, your healthcare, healthcare practitioner, but what has happened when you haven't done that? When you've advocated for yourself as you've had good, good responses, bad responses, I'd like to hear about it uh, and comment about that. Uh, Rena says, Rena Laverty says, my mom went to urgent care because she had three bumps on her left side of her torso. The doctor said she had shingles and which took, and, and which took the antiviral medication. Then she went to her own doctor and a follow up and she never had shingles. This is, and this is really important. When you feel like something ain't right, right? You know, something that, um, the doctor is telling you that is not something that, you know, you want to, uh, well, if you get a gut feeling that it could not be right, follow that gut feeling. Get a second opinion. We know it's so important to get a second opinion, you know, when this is happening. So really important uh, comment. Thank you. Toral Surti, hello. Uh, Cheryl Jolif, hello. How are you? Cheryl Salazar-Nievas, um, thank you so much. I appreciate the kind words. And Darcy uh, Purcell says, my son's pediatrician thought we should worry about my son's BMI and I would not let him talk to me because it uh, about it because I felt he would grow out of it, and he did grow out of it. I'm glad I didn't make his weight something to focus on. Really important, uh, Darcy, that you know a lot of times on both both ways. You know, um, there's there's shaming, fat shaming, right? So us as as physicians, that sometimes don't do a very good job in really giving a reason why somebody should have the appropriate BMI. If, you, if they're either, you know, too small, quote-unquote, or too large, you know, we don't give the reasons why it's important to maintain an adequate BMI. If, you're, if your BMI is too high, what can happen is that your disease states, right, high blood pressure, diabetes, all can go up. If your BMI is not appropriate, then, you know, you, you, you don't grow, uh, you possibly you're not growing at the appropriate rate. And could there be something that could, could be happening that could, that could be an issue that we could actually stop? Perhaps there's a hormone that's not being produced appropriately, so it's really important there. So, but but incredibly important question. I don't love the fat shaming, especially in our in our um, in our part of the world where everybody is supposed to be a certain size, and you know all we'll say is go go lose weight with no real clear plan of why or how. So really important. Mary Diaz, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Ladara Nampit, Namaste to you. Madia Seed, you are amazing. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Deb Baca Williamson, I need a scope down my throat, but can't afford. 
Um, you know, here's the thing, Deb. Uh, this is an important, important point. You know, in the U U.S., uh, cost is such an important part of this, right? I mean, you have to really consider cost as a big, big, big factor. But I'll tell you, my practice, you can give a payment plan, Deb. So you can always get a payment plan. Always ask your doctor, listen, you know, I can't afford it. May I make payment plans? Almost everybody, if you make a concerted effort to pay every month or whatever you can do, it's important to make sure that you don't let the expenses then take hold of your health. So, for example, if you have esophageal disease, which is, you know, the esophagus is a food tube going from the neck all the way to the end of the stomach, and you don't get a scope, and then you get esophageal cancer, it is just a tragedy because perhaps you could have prevented it. Perhaps you could have done something about it. So I'm not naive enough to say that cost is nothing, but don't make it the only factor. Don't make it the limiting factor, right, in, in stopping your care. So always that ask if um, you know you can you can make a you can make a payment plan, um, and uh, I appreciate you joining us, Mario Ojeda. Be blessed to yourself. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for joining us. Sue Harvey says doctors need to listen to us also because people are being overprescribed. Just say you're absolutely right, Sue. You know, here's the thing. It is. I'll say this. You know, it's it's harder to talk to somebody than just to do what take a prescription pad, write something. And here you go, ma'am. Have a good day, right? And and in our fast food society, right? What 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 do we think? What do we think? You gotta get something. You, when you come to the doctor, you gotta get something, right? You gotta get it. Get that piece of paper. Boom, you're out. So it's not always not always the case, you know. Uh, you you have to, as a physician, listen to the doctor, listen to the patient. As a physician, listen to the patient, find out what's really going on. It's not always easy because you know um, there's so many constraints. You know, there's so many, and I know for those who are physicians or watching, I know Dr. Maid, Madia is a, is a physician, there are plenty of others who are watching or physicians, it's not always easy. However, at the end of the day, you know, we're here for them, we're here for you. I mean, the doctors are here for patients, not the other way around. It's so important not to forget that. It's really important to know that, you know, at the end of the day, that is what we're here for, to, to help our, our, our patients, and sometimes it gets, it gets lost. Dr. Maria, yeah, I miss you as well. Thank you. Lynn Daly, hello, how are you? Thank you for joining us. And Diamond Blocker says, There's act, there actually was, it was so controversial, I dare not say here. In the end, though, I truly believed I made the right decision for myself. So sometimes, you know, not listening, not listening to the first opinion. I love getting second opinions. I think second opinions are awesome. So uh, sometimes at the end, you actually make the best decision, you know, for you and your family. So very well, thank you for for sharing that with us. Harold CJ um, says, hello, where are you out of? We're out of Detroit, Michigan, so Rock City, Motor City. So where are you from, Harold? Let us know. And and for those of you who are watching this Facebook Live, if you like uh, what you're seeing, then please like our Facebook page. I would love to welcome you to all the things we have to offer every day, so I appreciate that. Um, Evernice Gatawa, be blessed. Be blessed yourself. Thank you. Namaste. That's so nice. Uh, Mary Agnes says, one of the biggest problems is not disclosing all medications, meaning herbal supplements. Oh, what a great point. We almost missed that. Tommy's blood was getting thinner and thinner due to fish oil of all things. Our doctor was amazing in digging to find out what we had mistakenly not told him. And here's the thing. A lot of people say, what? Well, it's natural, right? So that doesn't mean that it's it's a medicine or it's a, an aspirin, so it doesn't doesn't affect you. But remember, even a baby aspirin can do what thin your blood. So you're somebody who's having a little stomach pain. You think, ah, the baby aspirin's nothing because it's over the counter. Well, guess what? The aspirin can cause an ulcer. It can cause you to bleed. So so important. And then all those things you're taking from you know from the vitamin place or from the grocery store, or your friends. The other thing is your friend's closet. You're taking these pills that look green and purple and brown. So important to avoid it. You know, and if you go to our website, askdrnanny.com, we have several resources there that can help you. And um, please look and see. There's some, air, some, some ways you can talk to doctors to make sure you don't miss things. I always say go to your doctor prepared, meaning that have a checklist, right, that you have before you, before you go to see a doctor. Don't ask you know, the doctor, where, how far is it to get your facility? You know, ask your receptionist that. Make sure you find out what you need to ask. Make a list. Talk to your doctor first. Say, Dr. Danny, you know, I, I have 
So four things to ask you today, and I'm hoping that you have the time uh, to be able to ask uh, answer that. And sure, most of us will say yes, because set the expectations, right? Set your expectations. Remember, we're here for you. So set the expectations, but be 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 respective of the doctor or the healthcare provider's time. You don't, you know, again, don't ask the stuff you can ask the receptionist or perhaps the medical assistant. Don't ask your doctor that. Make sure you use your time wisely. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Ladara Nam, Nam Pith says, I support, you, doc, I support you, Dr. Nandy. Thank you so much. Amazing yourself. And then Somnath Choudhury, thumbs up to you. Thank you so much. And Sheila Dempster Bolton says, I work in a major hospital. At 53, I got MS. I was told I would be on shots. I did my research and went AMA. That, which for those of you who don't understand what that is, is AMA is against medical advice. I admire doctors, but in this case, I made my own choice, and I'm glad I did. I have a great neurologist for the not last nine years. Still not on meds. She's great, and she respects my decision. And that's the key, informed decision. When you talk to your doctor, you want to make sure you have an informed decision, right? You want to make sure you know what you're talking about, and you know the pros and cons. You know that. So when you get a medicine, are the risks worth the benefits? And so is the benefits are the benefits outweighing the risk? Really important, really important. So awesome that you know you got your your doctor, and we uh, we we always talk about you know with with diseases like multiple sclerosis, other diseases of your immune system is really not functioning well. I love our superfoods cookbook. We have for those of you who are not are not familiar with it, the superfoods cookbook can really give you amazing recipes and and super simple ways to really empower your health. So the Superfoods Cookbook, we'll put a link right up here for those of you who would like to get that, uh, again, uh, uh, amazing stuff that you can do to empower your health. Uh, so thank you, Sheila, for that comment. Uh, Nicholas uh, Sinorin, what's the best thing for acid reflux besides Nexium? So, so acid reflux is a complex condition, right? So what's happening is that the and for those of you who don't know, you know, it's that heartburn feeling that you can have, sometimes burning or pain. It's the amount of acid that you have in your stomach is too much for the esophagus. So either the quantity is too much or the protection that you have from that acid is not enough. So then your body is being overwhelmed with that acid in your esophagus and it causes damage. So Nexium any X I U M and, and here Nicholas talking about that decreases the amount of acid that's coming in from your stomach into your esophagus. So what that does is allow your body not to be bombarded with that acid. So it allows it to heal, allows it to to really uh, be able to function. But diet is very critical, Nicholas. You want to make sure what you avoid acidic foods. You avoid carbonated foods, things like uh, the carbonated uh, pops, because that is carbonic acid. Remember, you can clean a carburetor with that, so not good for your stomach. And then it has a bunch of carbonations that pushes up the carbonic acid, right? So you have that along with caffeine. Caffeine relaxes the muscle that controls the amount of acid. So we're going to be coming out with uh, a GERD ebook. I'm really excited about it, and we'll put up a link for for a wait list uh, for the GERD book as well. Uh, if you're interested in that, I think it's going to be fantastic. And uh, continuing with Nicholas's question, um, so diet really important. You want to make sure you also don't eat late at night. So keep your stomach empty for about two to three hours before going to bed. Really critical. So you don't want to lie down with all that food and liquid. And keep your stomach empty for about two to three hours before going to bed. And when you take medicines like Nexium, remember it should be about a half an hour to an hour before your first meal if you take it in the morning. Typically, if your symptoms are during the day, then you want to take the medicine in the morning about a half an hour to an hour before breakfast if they're in the evening. So if you're, say, you're waking up all night with the stuff, then you take it a half an hour before dinner. So very important there. And Nicholas, yeah, if, uh, please... Um, uh, if you like our Facebook page, you have a lot of stuff on acid reflux that we talk about. So thank you for commenting. Kirsten Renee Campbell says, I had low back issues, but my doctor told me that there really was not much I could do outside of surgery and living in pain. I felt like he didn't give me options such as meditation, diet, yoga, and alternative therapies. So important. Get another opinion. You're absolutely right, Kirsten. And, and here's the key is that, you know, I was um, talking to a, 
syndicator of my television show. I, I'm I'm a host uh, of a Emmy Emmy winning award uh, Emmy award winning television show. Really fortunate for that. It's it's called uh, the Dr. Nandy Show, and I was talking to a syndicator out of out of uh, Europe, and he was about to have surgery, and I and I did the same thing, Kirsten. I told him that do you practice yoga? Have you ever seen an acupuncturist? Do you meditate? He had not, none of those. So this is what March, I think. I was in um, Cannes. I was in, um, in France at a, at a television meeting, and then we talked about this in March. In October, I saw him again, and he told me, "Thank you so much," because just as Kirsten Kirst, Kirst is pointing out, the meditation, the yoga, the acupuncture, not having surgery anymore, and his his pain was much more tolerable. And so it's really important that, you know, obviously in some cases I'm not saying surgery is not always, uh, always, always bad, but you want to make sure that you get other options. The key is that get an opinion besides the first one. Often it could be the right one. So really important point that you want to be able to use. You know, we're, I would never advocate that Western medicine is a failure or Eastern medicine is a failure. But boy, the combination of East meets what meets West is just beautiful, right? You take the best from the East and best from the West. And in my book um, that I published in September, um, it, it, we talk about the, how you take Eastern medicine, and Western medicine, and really gel them together. I talk about five the five uh, methods or five uh, principles of really achieving good health, and and one of them is is talking about listen, how do you use spirituality like meditation to heal the body. We now know that using meditation, prayer, yoga really decreases inflammation. Beautiful. But uh, you know, uh, it should, if you have a chance, you haven't seen it, pick up my book. It's called Ask Dr. Nandy, uh, Five Steps to Becoming Your Own Health Hero. And it really talks about exactly what Kirsten's talking about, being an advocate, using spirituality, uh, and, and really amazing stuff. Jessica Sackman, my doctor, told me to put myself first. I said, nope. My son has type 1 diabetes. Uh, my child comes first. You know, as a parent, I have um, three children, a 4, a 6, and a 14-year-old. So I, I hear you. You know, when, you're, when your kids are not doing well, you really – it's hard to explain what that feeling is like, isn't it, Jessica? You really put your kids first. But what I will say to you is that without your health, your kids are lost, right? You have to also make sure you are doing well. It's like you go on a plane, they say, before you put on the, you know, the, the, the little mask uh, to the person next to you, and while you're, while you're passing out, make sure you put the mask on first. So it's really important to make sure you're healthy so your child can also get the benefit of your health. Really important. So um, Denise McCloyd says, what is your BMI? So BMI is your body mass index. And if you look it up, you could, there are many ways you can, you can find it and, uh, and we'll put up a, a formula here before the end of the night for you to look up your body mass index. It's a it's a better better way to really measure uh, about your uh, your healthy body uh, weight and if your body is the right structure instead of just saying oh you're this many pounds. Let's say you're you know a football player, your body mass index will be very different than somebody who's um, who's weighs about the same right and is is not somebody who's an athlete. So really important. Health is wealth, says Ladara Nampit. Well said, thank you. Harold CJ said, should you take so much medicine that you cannot wake up to use the bathroom? My doctor said, I should wet the bed, then reduce the medication. That is absolutely not true. I'm not sure who you're seeing, but you know, if you, you should not absolutely take so much me medication that you cannot wake up to use the bathroom. Please uh, um, private message us, and we'll try to see if we can help you. That is absolutely not the case, that you should be so asleep that you should not be able to use a bathroom. That's it's absolutely, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, and then, I'm not sure who Grape and, Grape and Grub is, but hello, Grape and Grub. <laughs> the doctor told us what we what to do. We Googled it and asked WebMD, then did what Dr. Google said, and it caused a huge problem. Regret not trusting your doctor. We found out later that Google doctors are wrong over 50% of the time. That is a, such a key message. Dr. Google, you know, everybody's going on, you know, I've got this and that, and I'm going to put it on Google and get, them, get the answer. It's just not the case. I really think it's such a strong message, uh, Grape and Grub, that you really have to trust your doctor.
You cannot go to a computer and just put symptoms in and figure out. Almost all of it leads to death. You ever, you ever put anything in? Like I've got my ear lobes hurting and, you know, like six lines later you're dying. It's always death. So it, it's, it's, it's very fear-based and it's, fear, it's, it's very much um, not based in reality. I think, you know, listen, I think it's a good idea to get, a, get, a, get, an, get an idea, a sense of what's going on so that you can ask your doctor for some direction, right? So you can ask your healthcare provider, listen, this is what I found. Do you think this could be true? That's the conversation that you have. Instead of saying, well, Dr. Google said it, got to be true. So that is a different conversation. Curtis Jack says, can you please try to check into it for me about a weight loss program inpatient? I don't know what else to do. Please, Curtis, like our page, and we'll give you lots of tips about it and also private message me. Let me know where you're from. Also, a lot of, the, a lot of you, let us know where you're calling for or, or, or watching from or listening from so I can give you some advice. There are many, many healthy weight loss programs. I'm glad you didn't call it a diet because to me that is a bad word. You know, diets are destined to fail, right? Um, I, I, I have at so many of my patients. I had one of my shows. I had uh, the incredible uh, Brian McGill, who who said, you know, diets are destined for failure. He lost, uh, I can't even imagine. I think over a hundred pounds, I believe, uh, and he did it all with a sound nutrition and exercise plan. So Curtis, let us know and we'll try to hook you up, okay? Cynthia Gauthier, how do you in proper terms talk to a doctor who's all of a sudden rude at your appointment with him? Do you, do you just stop going back? I think that here's what you would do. Talk to the staff and, and just let them know, it's, especially if it's a group of doctors, right? So let's say there's a group of four or five doctors in a practice. You want to let them know, listen, you know what? I, I feel like there should be more respect and the doctor was very rude to me. Uh, if there's another doctor in the practice and you really like the practice and you want to say, can I see another doctor in the practice? If not, listen, you gotta get somebody else, right? You can't have somebody just insult you and, and, and you know berate you. That is not a relationship. The, the patient physician relationship is a relationship. It's a two way, it's not a one way street. You know, it's not us that dominate and that's the end of it. You have to understand that you want to make sure that you have a say in it. And respect is a huge part of it, right? It's a huge, huge part of this. So you want to make sure if you're not getting respect, if nobody's talking to you, then you know you have to find somebody else. So again, let us know if we can help you, what area you're in, and perhaps we can we can try to get you to the right person. And Mujbu Raman says, how do you become a doctor with scholarship? Please let us know where you're from, and uh, we'll give you as, uh, the best uh, best ideas we can. It's awesome uh, that you're interested in becoming a physician. The most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life, besides having uh, my children and uh, me married to my wife and, and having my amazing relationship with my parents and my sister, really, it's one. Of, it's the most rewarding thing besides uh, you know the amazing things with my family. Um, Lindell says, I'm blessed not to be taking any medications. Hallelujah. I appreciate it. And then Harold CJ says, North Carolina, bless you. Thank you. Just let us know what city, Harold CJ, will we'll help you uh, for sure. Um, Char Charlene Antoine Aird says, doctors need to stop discrediting, discrediting a patient who takes the time to research your health. Absolutely. 110%. Couldn't agree with you more. I love it when a patient comes to me with literature. That means that they're informed. That means they're an advocate. That means, guess what? They are interested and invested in their health. And why is that important? Because that means that when I ask them to, to, to please, you know, take a test or, or, or do some, some, something that will help them, guess what? They're going to do it because they're invested. So that doesn't mean that they're bad people or they're, you know, this or that or they're doing too much or whatever. I think it's fantastic because here's what happens. If, if they are invested in their health, that means they care. And if they care, they're going to try to get better, which to me, that's what I'm here for, right, to help you. And that's for my colleagues, too. They love it when you can be empowered for health. So perhaps you're right, Charlene. And if you find a doctor who's discrediting you, then it's time to move on, right? It's time to... Let them know that's happening, and if it doesn't change, then got to move on, right? So awesome. Um, Cindy Berg, use use 
use Paolo from Canada. I'm not quite mispronouncing your name, Cindy, so I apologize, but thank you for joining us. And Norma Alimbayu, aloha, watching you from Hawaii. So what is it, about five hours difference, I think? Um, so it's, it's what is it, 6 p.m. So uh, let us know where in Hawaii you're watching us from and maybe share a picture for those of us who have snow in April. Ah, it's kind of crazy, but we love Detroit. Uh, Peggy Bissoni, thank you for joining us on the beam. So on the beam, I love these kind. Of, I love these uh, <laughs> these titles. On the beam, sometimes it's hard to be compliant. The instruction was to cut back stress uh, to help with blood pressure and weight loss, but I work eighty hours a week. How do you change that? But maybe I should let the doctor know I don't see a way to be compliant. Maybe he has some ideas. Absolutely. Here's the other thing. You know, do you have to work 80 hours a week? That's the first thing. So in my book, The Five Steps to Becoming Your Own Health Hero, the book that I talked about, um, also titled Ask Dr. Nandy, is that you go first to find your purpose. So you got to find out why am I working 80 hours a week? Is it to get my beautiful car or my giant phone or my big house, right? If you're dead, doesn't matter if how big of your house you have or how nice of a car you have because you ain't driving it. So here's the thing, you gotta find out the why. So I ask you first, tell me why you're working 80 hours a week. And then we can see if you have to work 80 hours a week because of whatever circumstance in your life, I get it. But if you don't have to work 80 hours a week, you gotta change your job because you're gonna be dead. So a doctor can only do so much, right? They can give you advice, but they cannot change your life. You can't stop you from working 80 hours a week. We can only give you advice, prescriptions, and recommendations, right? You have to find out why am I doing what I'm doing? If I'm if I'm always chasing that wheel, that's all of us, you know, it's hard for all. Success is, is, is really important because the way we define success in our lives and maybe how much money you have or whatever it is, that is critical. You've got to define success for yourself on the beam. And then when you define success, and if it means that you have to work those 80 hours a week, I get it. And then your doctor, work with your doctor. But man, if you can, Stop working 80 hours a week and work 40 or 30 may mean that you don't get that stroke. May mean that you can actually walk on your own and somebody doesn't have to change your your diaper or clean your you know, behind when you have a bowel movement. You kind of think about that. That's how serious this stuff is. And at Pakwan from the Philippines, Magadnan uh, Gabipo, I think that's hopefully I'm saying it correctly. So Radhika Sundaram. Good morning from Mumbai. Thank you. From Mumbai. Thank you for joining us, and I appreciate it. And Pam, Pam Conley, I knew I had lupus, she said, and was sick way before my doctor found out. Tell us how you knew, Pam, and so she's being an advocate. Nicholas, I mean, absolutely, you're welcome. Mona, Mar Mona Marie. Mona Marie says, I have the same issue. Three back surgeries, and they want to do another one. I'm in so much pain and scared to go through this again. Um, Absolutely, Mona. You know, uh, let us know what area you're in and private message us and, and we'll get uh, at the bottom of it. Also, like our page, we have lots of uh, ways in which you can really um, have, we have blogs and, and recipes and issues that we can actually help you through this without always having to take a bunch more medications and more surgery, etc. Thank you for um, that comment. Kathy Sewell, Sewell, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, Burns. Misseldine, what can we take for GERD if Nexium and Prazol drugs cause pustular psoriasis outbreak? So a big problem, yeah. So Kathy, Kathy is talking about side effects from medicines which are called proton pump inhibitors, right? So proton pump inhibitors are drugs that, you know, are, are really are revolutionary in treating acid reflux has, has really changed the way gastroenterologists like myself have practiced medicine. But she's having some horrible side effects. So what do you do? Um, Kathy, please sign up for our waiting list for the GERD, um, the GERD ebook. I think uh, you'll find some natural remedies that you, you would be surprised about. But what I would say is, have you tried the H2 blockers first? Medicines like Zantag, Tagamet. Um, and, and so uh, those those medicines, also called Pepsin, they can really help you. If, if the Azols or the PPIs, the proton pump inhibitors are not working for you, or they can give you side effects, that's what I would recommend. But uh, uh, let us know where you are also um, so we can help you as well. We have a lot of tips on um, on Gord on our website, askdrnandy.com, also on our Facebook page. So please uh, 
uh, let us know. And then here's Ladara Nampit says, Mind over matter, meditate. Meditation is huge, huge, unbelievably huge. Why? Because meditation has been shown to reduce inflammation in your body, right? Reduce the amount of inflammation you have in your body. Reduces the cortisol, reduces the mediators, or the ways, the, the substances that, that can really lead to inflammation. So really critically there, critical there. Fatima Ahmad says, uh, love your book. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, pra Praveen Salunke, good morning to you. And Mary Beth Sochia uh, Bundy, I believe, yes. I spent almost 11 years telling my doctor I felt all my health problems were linked to one thing. I ended up going to a new doctor, and in my first appointment, he said he had read through my records and was positive I had fibromyalgia before I ever get to tell him my 11-year concern. Wow. That's hard, you know, and here's the thing, you know, it's when you go to a, a new doctor, you want to make sure that you um, tell them as much as you can. Sometimes you have to summarize it. Sometimes you may want to give them a summary of some of the main things. You know, you don't want to make it war and peace here, right? But you want to respect their time, but at the same time, let them know what you've been suffering so they understand what you've been going through. The difficulty with with sometimes being a physician is that you know, you're, see, you're seeing people that are sick and ailing, but you're the only you that you have, right? You're the only person that you have that can advocate for yourself. Be your own health hero and talk about them and be an advocate. Really important. Kay Stewart says, how do you manage gastroparesis? So that's an amazing question. So Kay is uh, talking about when your stomach muscles. Can you imagine your stomach is a muscle, right? So the muscles, when they don't move very well, food gets it gets sitting in your stomach, not moving into your intestines. So you get full very quickly. You often have nausea, vomit. You can barely eat. And we used to have drugs to help with that, but we now don't have medicines for gastroparesis. So, okay, please, uh, uh, private message us. We can tell you there, there are many reasons for gastroparesis, and some being diabetes, diabetes some being um, idiopathic, or we don't know, but the other drugs can sometimes cause it. There are medicines that we can give um, that are compounded as well. So really uh, let us know. Um, we, we will be able to help you. Tell, you. tell us also what area you live in, and there are some medicines that could, that could definitely help you. Um, so appreciate that. Jackie Wolishewski, hi, how are you? Thank you for joining us. I appreciate us. Appreciate you, rather. Roxanne Witzel, what's your opinion regarding keto? Here's the thing, you know, there's so many diets out there, and um, and there's so many methods of, of people, quote, unquote, losing weight. I just think that you have to follow a nutrition plan and not a diet, uh, really, to be able to, to, to succeed. I think that most diets are not sustainable. So I, I really encourage you to read my book, and uh, I talk about some really simple methods in which you can uh, revolutionize your health, right? So we talk about the five pillars in which you can change your health, and nutrition is being one of them. So let us know. And it's, it's I, I believe you can get it from Amazon um, or Barnes & Noble or go to our website, AskDrNanny.com. The book is called Ask Dr. Nanny, and we can talk to you about how you can um, really take, take a hold of your health, take a hold of your nutrition, and really make a big difference. Fatima Ahmad watching from Pakistan. What city in Pakistan? Let us know. Thank you for joining us. Um, Ladara Nampit again says something very wise. It's not how you eat, it is what you eat that's matter. Absolutely. And I also think that eating appropriate amounts, right, right, is important. And the stuff you put in your, in your, uh, uh mouth is super important as well. So awesome. Uh, and then Mona, Mona Marie says, yeah, Brian McGill, he's a testament for losing weight. He looks great. Uh, he is awesome. And I, you know, what Brian does is, it's something quite amazing, and Brian talks about empowering people and really making the best of your life. And he has a he has a great great uh, website and and great social media site, and and he he really really gets about it. Please check him out. We've got the link right here, Brian Miguel, uh, and his uh, wife, amazing Jenny Young Miguel. They're awesome people, and and they really really encourage people to take their health and take their wellness in their own hands. So it's awesome. Uh, Sheila Dempster-Bolton 
says, thank you, Dr. Nene, admire you for your perspective and open-mindedness and alternatives to medicine. There are times when medicines are necessary, absolutely, and when and if possible, alternatives should be researched and considered along with consultation with a trusted physician. As you said, only research from reputable sources such as Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic. Absolutely. You know, here's the thing, you know, you want to make sure that you, because there are a lot of people that are predators, right? When you're desperate, when you're ill, there are a lot of people that will take advantage and say, here you go, come one, come all, it's vaudeville, right? Here you go, I will save you. And so you want to make sure you, you get reputable sources, but also don't be closed-minded. Try to be uh, try to be open-minded to different possibilities, how you can really change the paradigm. Sometimes you listen to a different opinion. For example, the microbiome. The microbiome can change so many things, right? The microbiome, which is, by the way, there are 40 trillion bugs in your intestine that can control your destiny, right? So that's the microbiome, and uh, you should check them out. Just go to, uh, we'll put the site on here, um, go to biome.com forward slash health hero, and you can check them out. Really important. But the microbiome can be another alternative to some just taking medicines and, and doing procedures. It's really, it's really amazing all the things on the planet that are, that are being, um, are being offered. Really love it. Um, Eve, Eva Escalante from Idaho. Awesome. I got a head and chest cold. What shall I take for a good natural cure? So what I would do is make sure that you're getting something that most Americans are not getting, which is an awesome night's sleep. Why is that? Because your reparative mechanisms really make a big difference, right? Your reparative mechanisms, your immune system, your entire body repairs and heals, right? So it doesn't also mean that you have to take an antibiotic. You can, and there are not a lot of things that people say, well, take this, take that. But I think the main thing is get rest. Make sure you stay away from other people to prevent them from getting sick and, and time. You want to make sure you get adequate nutrition, meaning that don't eat a bunch of fast food, don't eat a bunch of processed food. You want to eat whole foods that can help your immune system, help your body heal from within. I love the Superfoods Cookbook. You know, please check that out. That'll help you a lot. Not only helping you when you're sick, but preventing you from getting sick. So it's awesome. Uh, Mary Beth Socia Bundy says, I'm currently not taking any medications because I lost my insurance. What's the best ways to deal with fibromyalgia? Sorry to hear that. You know, fibromyalgia is a, is a really difficult diagnosis. One of the biggest things we, we ask people when they have fibromyalgia is, can and will you get a good night's sleep? So an adult, 78 hours, seven to eight hours of sleep a night. And very few people get that. And so you want to be able to get enough sleep because what happens is that you know, with fibromyalgia, not getting the appropriate amount of sleep is really, really critical. If you can do exercises such as yoga, meditation will really help you. Um, you know, and, and, and you can take over the counter medications like Tylenol, like pain medications, but I would not, I would not advocate for, um, taking injections or um, taking a lot of what's called non steroidals ibuprofen you can take it all you know you can take it uh, intermittently or occasionally but unless the pain is severe i wouldn't i wouldn't do that but really look into yoga meditation and you can private message us and tell us where you are located and we can help you try to find resources as well fatima Ahmed said you shouldn't tolerate disrespect from anyone let alone a doctor who you should trust with your health. Absolutely well said, well said, Fatima. Super good for super human. You are what you eat, Ladara Nampit says, absolutely, you're awesome. Carolyn Can says, where are you located? In the big motor city in Detroit, Rock City. So in Detroit, Michigan. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, Tom Cook says, do you think Kane and Undertaker are brothers in real life? Do not know, Tom. Tom's a funny guy. <laughs> Tom also says, here's some comedy. If a dog eats hot dogs, is that considered cannibalism? No, I think it's considered stupidity because dogs, hot dogs are some of the worst things you can eat. I tell my kids, you would not eat hot dogs ever again if you knew what the heck was in them, right? So, but thank you for that. <laughs> Calming the chaos, my guided meditation uh, is really a, a cool way to learn about meditation uh, for the young lady who was talking about fibromyalgia. And we've got a, a great uh, free calming the chaos guided meditation for you right here. Um, let's see what else can we, we can give you. Aisha Thurman, my doctor and I disagree a lot. Now she wants to give pills 
and I want a more holistic approach from Chicago. Aisha, you're in Chicago. You've got to find someone who you can work with. I love um, functional medicine doctors as well, some with an MD background that can really help you to do both and get best from the east and west. Sometimes you need to take pills, though. I'm not saying you never should take pills, right? I'm just saying that you have to make sure that you're appropriate in what you're expecting. So really very, very important there. So for those of you who are joining us, um, we've been talking about for the last uh, 45 minutes about have you ever not listened to your doctor and what happened? I want to hear the good, bad, and the ugly, and we're trying to give advice. So uh, if you like what you're hearing, then please like our page, Partha Nandy MD. Got lots of great stuff for you. We'd love to hear from you and have you participate in our um, our Facebook community. Also, let's see, Kathy Sewell, Burns, Misseldean, most of the Tagamets and et cetera aren't strong enough. They aren't. So if that's the case, Kathy, and you're still suffering from GERD, you know, you know talk to us about and we'll get the – ebook to you when it's released and so perhaps that 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 may be something that be useful for you but also private messages i mean there are surgical options as well if you are really at your wits end and there's something called the missing fun replication etc but i'd like you to try the some of the natural methods that we talked about before giving up um you know but uh tagamet and and zantac can be helpful if they're not strong enough for you then We've got to talk some more. Jessica Cortez says, I'm having acid reflux. Please let us know where you're located. Maybe we can help you, Jessica. Um, Sheila says, I use meditation. Sheila Dempster-Bolton, I use meditation for my MS. I'm a believer in meditation. The mind is more powerful than we think. You're absolutely right. I've got the Calming the Chaos Meditation Guide here for those of you who have not tried meditation. It's a great way to begin. I really love it. Bonnie McDonald Bell. Bell Belial says, I speak, but they don't listen. Time to make a change. Then uh, I'll tell you, Bonnie, if they are not listening to you, you got you to gotta make that change. So really important. Carolyn says, what can help arthritis and what blood tests need to pinpoint what kind? So Carolyn, it really depends on what type of arthritis you have. Uh, does, it, does, it wake you up in, does it wake you up in the middle of the night? Is it worse in the morning? And does it get better after you move? Um, is it associated with fatigue? There's so many other uh, questions you have to ask, not just blood tests, but you have to really talk to your doctor about, um, or your healthcare provider about what really makes it worse, what makes it better, and when it happens, and all the associations. Arthritis can be just wear and tear, right? Osteoarthritis, or it can be a condition that's autoimmune, like rheumatoid arthritis, or perhaps lupus, or psoriatic arthritis. There are many, many reasons why. So let us know where you're calling, where you're not calling from, but rather where you're watching us from, and uh, we'll help you for sure. And Ladara Nampit, 80% food and 20% activity. You know, I think that's a, I think it's, it's, it's important. Uh, I think both are equally important, in my opinion. You know, you want to be able to eat the right amount of food and also continue uh, activity. So very important. Cindy Bradburn Morris, what to take besides Neurontin? Tell me what's going on um, with you, Cindy, again, so we can uh, we can uh, advise you better. Fatima Ahmed is in Karachi, City of Lights, and say that never sleeps. No doubt you should send some pictures to us, Fatima. You can uh, private message us and let us some pictures. I haven't seen any pictures of Karachi. Never been to Karachi, but I heard it. Here it's uh, amazing. Angelique Menx joined us. Gina, thank you for joining us. Gail Damaco. Charlene Lini Gibbons. I reversed prediabetes to nutrition. Good for you. Reverse high cholesterol as well. I'm 38 years old, and for five years I've been going to the doctors. I finally found an ovarian mass, 15 centimeters. I was tempted two weeks ago and they got it all, but I had to go through but I had to go through for years. I had stomach issues, but they would never find anything. Please, everyone, advocate for yourself and always do natural and clean. eat clean first. Finally, I'm losing weight and feeling fantastic. What a great message, you know. Really talking about how you can empower yourself through nutrition, through advocacy to really reverse a lot of diseases. Thank you, Charlene, for joining us. And that's a great, great comment. Uh, again, you know, some of these comments, uh, some of these methods, you know, you can find in my book, Ask Dr. Nady. So if you're interested, please pick one up at Amazon um, 
or Barnes and Noble, wherever you like. Um, I think it would give you some great ideas on how you can do this, how you can advocate for yourself, and how you can really make a huge difference in your life. Debbie Fisher, once, and how are you, Debbie? One of our patients. That's awesome. Thank you for joining us. Um, watching from uh, uh, Bob, Bobby D. Lagapak, watching for, I think, Philippines, right? And it's a pleasure listening to your important insights. Well, thank you so much for listening to us. I appreciate it. Uh, and let's see. A couple more comments before I call it a night here for all of you folks. Uh, Saf, Safira says, hello. Do you recommend Ayurvedic uh, medicine? Absolutely. I spent time in India, Safira says. Had an Indian boyfriend learn about Ayurvedic and live by this. Can you discuss? Absolutely. You know, I I, I like all the alternatives uh, that we have of medicine. It's, and it's an ancient form of medicine. For those of you who have not found um, help, the traditional medicine can really be important. Absolutely. And I think that you want to keep your mind open, but you want to make sure you go to an advanced practitioner, somebody who's had experience in Ayurvedic medicine. So I, I appreciate it. Awesome, uh, everybody. Thank you for joining us. It really was such a pleasure. We'll answer more of your questions. I think we had about a, um, more than 100 or so, and there'll be more coming in. So I appreciate you, all of you, um, asking your questions or your comments. We'll get them answered. Um, and I thank you for spending some time with us today. I appreciate it. And, uh, and again, if you like what you saw, then please uh, like our Facebook page or, or go to our website. Uh, we have amazing resources we can offer to you. I'd love to be able to help you in, in conquering whatever challenge you have. Uh, so remember, make healthy living a part of every day. Namaste to all of you. I appreciate your time. And I will see you very soon on Facebook Live or maybe on television. Thank you.